it's it's you're conditioning the air and so the condition of the air is important right so not just from a temperature standpoint but also from a quality standpoint and i would also mention it that way comfort and yeah, health comfort and then health 100 percent. so the comfort side is going to be temperature humidity right and then the other side is going to be the actual cleanliness of the air and stuff the quality of the air that you're breathing The customer always appreciated me giving them that education because if they don't know, they don't know. There's no way for them to do anything about it. And a lot of the service techs that I worked with, they looked at that as, oh, I'm a service tech. I don't sell stuff, you know, and I'm like, time out. If you get a capacitor that's 10 microfarad and it's reading 6.5, do you recommend changing it? They're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, if you have a coil that's covered in mildew, do you recommend a solution or you just let it be covered in mildew? You know, like another really good point. Actually, I was going to make it earlier. I'm glad you brought it up again is um, the field personnel, generally speaking, they, you know, they're there to either install something or fix something. And I don't think of themselves as salespeople. And I always say when I'm in a, in a class, let's say in front of a bunch of guys, I'm like, listen, you're a salesperson, whether you like it or not, you've already, if you have a significant other, you've already done a sales job on somebody. Right? <laughs> True story. So you're all right. You're all right. That's you're right. good to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, as a service tech too, like the way I, cause it's funny, like only maybe two years in, like I became a trainer at service experts and I was training guys with 15, 20 years experience but it was in a way of communicating like how to talk about IAQ. You know, it wasn't something like with a, I would tell them, I'm like, look, if they got a, a bad compressor, you have to sell them a new compressor, right? You have to show them that it's grounded out or whatever's going on with it. And you have to sell them a new compressor. And I would have helped them understand like IAQ is no different. It's the same thing. You're providing a solution for a problem. And I was able to, some of them slower than others, but convert that mindset of this is providing a solution for a problem. Yeah. And then the whole department started to really excel and sell IAQ. I mean, I averaged like 18 to $20,000 a month in IAQ. That's really interesting. It's a mindset, isn't it? I mean, it's a yeah. legitimate mindset. They're already doing it. That's what you got to just let them think. Listen, um, you get asked questions all the time from the homeowner because you're the expert, right? All you're doing is sharing what you know with them. Yep. You're not, you're, you know, you're not really that there's solutions, right? They're asking you your opinion on solutions. And, yeah. And, yeah. And it's, you know, it's just a different mindset that that's term sales, right? Or salesman or salesperson. Yep. It's again, it holds people up. I think, you know, in their minds, oh, this, don't think of yourself as a salesperson. You're a technician, you know, a lot, you know, people are going to ask you about what you know. Yeah. Tell them. <laughs> yeah. You're an expert. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you're conditioning the air. And so the condition of the air is important, right? So not just from a temperature standpoint, but also from a quality standpoint. And I would also mention it that way, you know, sometimes I'd be done with a maintenance call. It'd be six months old, clean as a whistle, no problems to report. Everything's running perfect. And I would ask that question at the end of the call. Hey, I noticed that, you know, the, the condition of the air is, is great in terms of temperature. Everything's running fantastic. But I noticed you didn't have anything to protect the condition of the quality of your air, you know, and there you go. And, and they'll be like, well, what do you mean by that? And, and it, would, it would open up a conversation and it would just kind of spin from there. And I can't tell you how many times on brand new equipment, six months old or a year old, they, you know, do a $2,000 IQ package, you know, and, and load up. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Did you ever, generally speaking, you know, again, I think some, some, HVAC personnel might be in, afraid to ask questions. There's a little bit of fear factor in there because they don't want to seem creepy or, or, or you know, being a little too prying, if you will. But asking somebody about like allergies and asthma, have you ever gotten any negative like a reaction from somebody or felt uncomfortable asking that question? Or generally, is it people? No, they, no, it's straightforward. I mean, again, as a professional you reserve the right to ask these questions. That's all a part of the condition of the air. You know, not just again from a temperature standpoint, but there is a condition and the quality 
What is the quality of the condition of that temperature and that air? Is it good temperature? Great. Well, let's talk about the, the quality of the condition of the air. You know, is it, yeah. is it dirty? Is there anything protecting it? You know, it, it's about their well being. And I think that's why yeah. we're justified in asking that you have everything to do with that condition as a mechanic, right? And that yeah. being responsible for that equipment. I think it's fair, right? I think, yeah. I think a lot of people are just a little bit nervous or intimidated. And that's why I asked it. It's like, you know, it's really part of the job, right? I mean, it's part it of is. your, your system has everything to do with the air you're breathing and let me yep. do, let me help you. Like, yep. you, I think it was brilliant the way, how you said that too. It's like, you know, there's stuff on here to protect the, protect the equipment. Let's think of this yeah. a little bit differently. Would you like to take it the next step? Yeah. How about we protect you and your well being and what the air you're breathing? I think it's brilliant, Chris. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the condition of the air is, is it's, it's two parts. It's the temperature and it's the quality. You know, there's two different pieces of comfort and yeah, health. Comfort and then health, 100%. So the comfort side is going to be temperature, humidity, right? And then the other side is going to be the actual cleanliness of the air and stuff, the quality of the air that you're breathing. I mean, to me, I've just had so much experience in the field. I've ran thousands of calls and I've gone behind other companies and even company or technicians that worked for us. And they didn't mention anything about anything IEQ related. And I would go out there and I would find a need and I would bring it to the customer's attention and they would get upset because the guy didn't bring it to their attention because they did want it. They just didn't know, you know, like mm -hmm. they didn't bat an eye at spending $3,000, $5,000 on a whole. They were all about it. They were upset that they didn't get a chance to do it sooner. You know, that was their, their thing. And so that's when I became a trainer. That's kind of the way I would spend that with the guys that were resistive to approach uh, the, of the homeowner of IAQ. You know, it was something that it's a part of the whole umbrella, you know, obviously you need to make sure that the drain line's draining good and it's not clogged up. You need to make sure that the fan motors and compressors aren't over amping. You got to make sure that the coils are clean and they're not full of mildew. You got to make sure that the fan blades are clean and they're not full of gunk and mildew and that the cabinet's clean. And if you're not pursuing that whole entire, you know, envelope, then in my opinion, you're not doing your job thoroughly. You're just not. Do you think um, that homeowners, generally speaking, from your experience, don't realize how much the HVC contractor has to do with IAQ? Yeah, I think that there, there is a little bit of not so much as today. Today, after going through the pandemic and everything, I think that it's been advertised a lot more contractors are advertising for IAQ and stuff. So it's different now than it was back. Back then there was a disconnect a little bit, you know, people are, you know, wondering why I'm presenting some IAQ occasionally, um, especially if there wasn't a need that they felt, you know, but usually by the time I'd get through it, they would see it and they would connect the dots yeah. and whether or not they decided to pull the trigger, sometimes they wouldn't. You know, sometimes they'd say, no, hey, listen, I'm like, hey, listen, you don't have to make any decision to do anything while I'm here today. I just want to make sure I'm doing my job thoroughly in case six months later, you something comes up and you're like, why didn't that last guy yeah. tell me? I'm, yeah. It's CYA, CYA, right? I'm going to cover my tail. And I can't tell you how many times, probably 30 or 40 times in my 10 years, people would call back in to the office two months later and schedule a time for me to go back out and install the UV lights and do all that stuff. You know, they had time to do their research and they, they decided they wanted to spend three or $4,000 after doing all their research. And I'd go back out and I'd put it all in. Isn't that the best compliment ever to get asked yes. for? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, they would. They'd be like, you know what, Chris, I had guys, I had guys tell me, you know, I, I'd heard of purifying water with UV lights and I'd heard, heard of hospitals doing different. I, I'd never really considered doing it in my own home. And after you were here, I was not aware of it, but I, I took your advice and did the research and that's why you're here today. You know, that's why I scheduled the appointment for you to come back and, and to put all this in. And they would thank me. I mean, people would give me 20, 50, hundred dollar tips for, you know, coming in and showing stuff that, that they weren't aware of that they wanted to have in their home. Yeah. I think you're right. Good point too. Since the pandemic, um, I, uh, homeowners are researching things more, right? They're, they're home more, first of all, probably because they had to work from home or, or, or whatever, but, um, but yeah, they're more in tune with what's going on inside the house. I think more than ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 